I wonder how my new neighbors are adjusting. I wonder if they can hear my voice. This is what's called an Altbau, an old construction here, an old building here in Berlin. So let's see, Artist Journal, July 27th, 2023, broadcasting from the high seas of the imagination in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. And check out Tukes. Tukes does it again. Tukes has another super original work here. Uh, something that looks like could have only been created by AI. Of course, Tukes is an AI artist out of Brazil. I thought out of Turkey, but out of Brazil, I just saw on Super Rare. This work was listed on Super Rare, went for an ETH. Interesting title. We'll look at it in a second, but let me just zoom in. So you can clearly see if you're familiar with AI and I mean, I was listening to a Spaces yesterday with Daniel King. It was on a super rare Spaces with Daniel King in Santiago. And the word came up. I'm not sure if it was the host that was saying the word AI traces. And I wonder, and I wasn't, it's almost, I think that might be like, maybe that's the word that people use for what I call AI distortions. Uh, but you can see here, this is definitely has the quality of AI and Tukes just blending, I mean, doing incredible work here, blending these super soft kind of, I guess, you know, they're almost like brushes, these kind of very, you know, soft brush gradients with these kind of hard edged uh, lines, kind of feels like a 21st century Kandinsky is what this looks like. If I had to summarize, I mean, what else is it like? It's not exactly, uh, what is the name of that abstract artist? It's not exactly Cy Tombley. Uh, I mean, it's really its own thing. And again, this looks like something that I'd be tempted to call natively AI. Something that only AI would have produced. I don't think a human... I mean, put it this way. It's just like a whole other uh, style that we've basically never seen before. Tuks has done this a few times by the way, and it is kind of reminiscent of some of Tuke's other work. It almost feels like blends of previous works, actually, because uh, I'll show you here. Let's actually, and yeah, I mean, just so stunning. Like, I mean, the originality here that, and the potential of AI. And so for the naysayers of AI art, I mean, I don't know what they say to stuff like this, because if Tuke's hadn't made it, would we have ever seen anything like this? Was Tukes not involved in creating this? Was this simply pressing a button? Because if it is, then all of us could make super original AI art, but that is not the case. So really interesting piece here. Uh, again, kind of reminiscent, and here's the title. I got a playful mind. This went for an ETH to Elni, and it was actually minted a week ago. And again, we see it's not, you know, because we were seeing in that previous uh, uh, Anani Mu kerfuffle that it's there was a sense that, oh, nobody had bid on it, you know, for a month. There were zero bids. Therefore, uh, we should be ha happy with whatever is offered for our art. And here, I mean, nobody bid and then an ETH. Then it sold for an ETH. So I like this title, too. I think this is uh, this is Tukes. I got a playful mind, indeed. And one other thing I want to actually point out here, which is the edges. The edges are super interesting here. Look at you. See how uh, it, first of all, there's this kind of you know matte black margin, and then it's not perfectly square. As we go down here, it's kind of warped a little bit. I think that's super interesting. There's almost like a drop shadow you know, on the white part of the canvas. Uh, I think that's just another super interesting detail. And a final sort of thing just on this work, and it's square. And that also gives the sense of an AI artwork is again, it's kind of the default for anybody that's made uh, art on mid journey, you know that if you don't do too much, you will get squares if you don't change the ratio. So there is something kind of, uh, an AI quality to the square work, we might say, to the default, we might say. And we were discussing that yesterday with Cap'n. Uh, but 
All, we'll get to that in a second though. So Tukes, so really cool work here. Not actually perfectly square though. I should add, this doesn't look perfectly square. So uh, Tukes clearly happy with the work, made it the banner headline. And as you can see, a bit of a departure here. And But it, it does use what we might say, it almost feels like, again, a kind of Kandinsky-esque version of some of the, you know, uh, application of some of the elements that we've seen in Tukes before. And I mean, as I said, Tukes does it again, like this was super original here. Ayashiki Lake, which was part of this series. Here was another one, Tell Der Geister. And then of course there was Enigma here. I remember starting a show with this and saying, like, staring into the heart of technology. This feels like a technological, this looks like you're staring into AI, the heart of AI here. A beautiful work, and again, kind of similar ideas. This super soft, you know, brushwork, you know, spray, for lack of a better term, with this super hard-edged, kind of digital. We do see similarities here, but it's kind of more chaotic here, uh, but quite effective and, again, super original. So Tukes does it again uh, out of Brazil. Awesome uh, right up here. Deliriously wild, borderline deranged, psychedelic, multisensory outburst. There is Tukes. Uh, big thank you and shout out to everybody who came yesterday, especially Cap'n, who uh, out of Costa Rica who, and it was just an, a great show. Cap'n's such an interesting artist, and Cap'n delivered. And it was just, like, from, if you're an artist, you'll be very interested in a lot of the things that Cap'n had to say and how they, uh, and, and how he goes about making work and even all the different uh, softwares that he used, very obscure softwares I'd never even heard of. So anyways, if you didn't listen to this, already 388 tuning in, uh, so th those are people who showed up and listened to you after. That is a really nice number, by the way, especially now. Like, uh, th this is a great number. So again, big thank you and shout out to everybody who came. And thank you, Louis JPD. Thank you for enjoying the show. And the spontaneous... Yeah, I, I, it is one big improvisation, and I appreciate you recognizing that. There is no way I could plan and write a show like this this many times a week. So thank you for the awesome work here. I love these colors, by the way. Two of my favorite color combinations, the violet and kind of the neon pink, and this cool kind of distorted look. So anyways, I totally appreciate it. Humbling. Thank you, Louis JPD. Just awesome. Glad you're enjoying the show. And couple of comments from last time. I can't read all of them. I, I wanted to focus on Lucas Osa. Too much focus on easy money. So remember we were talking about how NFTs, that uh, chart of the NFT, new NFT buyers kind of going like this. And uh, that and the person wondering out loud to themselves, why would anybody, there's no reason for people to be in NFTs right now. And because there's no money to be made, it was the was the rationale. So Lucas responds, too much focus on easy money is the real problem with these art traders. We are artists, not money makers. This is about supporting the culture, not chasing profits. Just as we don't expect thousands of dollars from a single collector, they shouldn't expect a profit from collecting one piece. And it's disrespectful to assume that an artist is using your name. So this is referring to the Anonymu kerfuffle, and it's disrespectful to assume that an artist is using your name just posting on Twitter. If they didn't share anything, they might even be called a bad promoter. Yes, yeah, as Unknown Collector was saying, I believe, it doesn't make sense. And I was, yeah, I mean, I've been, as that kind of sank in what happened there the last couple of days, I mean, it really was $12 above the reserve. And if the artist wanted to put a buy now at 0.15, they would have put a buy now, but they put a reserve. And I thought it was interesting. I mean, I was thinking about it. Why didn't Anani Mu then just do the reserve? Because they didn't want the 24 hour auction. They wanted just a really good deal for themselves is kind of my conclusion. Uh, if you disagree, feel free. Um, but I thought the more I thought about it, the more kind of unfair that whole episode seemed to me. Uh, Retro Manny, uh, great show, Adrian, ahead of the times for sure. So regarding, uh, I think, the intro there, will this scene ever be recognized? When will it be recognized, if ever? 
the opening question there for yesterday's or Tuesday's show, ahead of the times for sure, regarding how much attention to give to NFTs specifically, I kind of agree. I personally love when you go through an artist's social media page and pick out pieces from there, especially when there's work in progress. Is that NFT related? Sometimes, I guess, but pointing out as we look at the work in progress, in progress, it really is about the art first. And I think it's because you know, I am an artist first. So I genuinely like when things are working or however things are working, like I kind of want to know. Uh, so I have to be careful here as my table is about to fall apart here. Um, so all to say, uh, yeah, it, and that's not to say, you know, none of us are interested in money. But I think we're kind of art first, because if we were interested in money, most of us should be in a different business. Okay, like if you're all about money first, you should probably be in like finance or computer programming, at least like, you know, AI. I don't know, but you should probably shouldn't be an artist if your goal is to make it big financially. Uh, so thank you for the comments. Very interesting. And human boy, good thing to purge after a move. Absolutely. And that is big time what I'm doing. I'm still kind of recovering from the allergies here. Uh, it really does show you all of the things you just don't want to carry around anymore. I think it's going to be liberating. I've already started this process. Interesting to see the new location. Has you facing the opposite direction as well? Now it looks like you are viewing the art with us. So that was something Gogolitis has kind of mentioned to me two or three times at least. You really got to fix that. Uh, Gogolitis, of course, is a graphic designer, I think, by trade. So, yeah, that is not lost. And so I was really happy to fix that. And I want to kind of upgrade a few things here as we go on. But let's just, yeah, get the show done and uh, one, one thing at a time. But thank you, uh, human boy. Always great to hear from you. And finally, Demon Ego, thank you for your comments on the monologue in a moment of despair. As you know, I've been showing my green cutting mat for a long time in photos of the creation phase of my physical collages. You gave me the idea to digitally create the cutting mat and add it to my gift collages while you were showing these photos in your journals before. So actually, I didn't include the physical mat in any of my works. All I added were digital grids. But I'll add the physical from now on. The idea came to me in my mind. Thank you. Thanks to you again. And it's the power, I think, of because it's not like I had some insight here. I was just trying to describe the work. And it's the power of conversation. I mean, it's the magic of conversation is where all of a sudden, you know, oh, I just say something and all of a sudden it's maybe slightly different than you would have said it. And then all of a sudden you have like five other ideas that come along with that. And then I vibe off that. So we're vibing here. So great to hear from you, Demon Ego. Uh, that's really awesome. And thank you, everybody here for the comments. Uh, just too much fun. It is too much fun. Uh, and also, finally, Eitso commented on the show from uh, from Monday, where we're discussing the phone pieces and releasing them all at once. Thanks for showing my phone pieces. So glad to see you're still checking out my work. To your point, yes, I, I likely could have made more money off of the cell phones had I released them slower and priced them higher. So we're back to the money theme. I expected even additions would have done better money-wise, but I have a lot of these, so I'd rather get them out and moving fast during this bear. I have very little release plan and i'm minting listing at random times to give folks in different time zones a better chance some will be auctions all will be one of ones and i think this is great i like the lightheartedness and i think i kind of do i kind of list pretty randomly too uh i think it's good to exper experiment and see what works excuse me excuse me i am still recovering here people uh, but thank you for your patience. And finally, uh, walk still unrecognized by most of the world, this digital art scene that we're discussing. So walk weighs in, always fascinating, amazing artist. And uh, buy on the dip, bonus points for quoting Brian Tracy. And yeah, this is close to my heart. I mean, Brian Tracy, it's not for everybody, but I consider Brian Tracy the original life coach. And, you know, when I was a teenager, I found it, I didn't know how to act. Like they don't really teach you in school what is like appropriate behavior, especially, you know, th there's no practical ethics class. There's no, uh, 
you know, like in Greeks, in Gr ancient Greek philosophy, they call it phrenesis, practical wisdom, right? And that's why I see actually a lot of these, what I call the success philosophers, even like, and I'm not even a big Tony Robbins fan or something, but I'd put them in that tradition. They're kind of like out of American pragmatism, out of a, they're like a branch of American pragmatism, which goes all the way back to the Greeks with like Aristotle and the Nicomachean ethics, which is what is appropriate action, right? Like, how do you act? Is there a is one way to act better than another? And I, intuitively, we know this, but we don't. We're not really taught this, so this is quite valuable uh, stuff. So I actually did a search on Brian Tracy, the Unbreakable Laws of Self Confidence. This is a very great uh, video. There's Brian Tracy, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so this is awesome. So it's again, it's not for everybody, but if you are interested, uh, I will I'll leave the link in the description today's show. Uh, and it's great for like, put it this way, I've, I've given it to some people I've sent this uh, video to and some people are like, want nothing to do with it. Other people, they go, you know, I haven't gotten over my relationship for seven years. After watching this, like this is like giving me the clarity I need to move on. So it's really depends on the person, uh, you know, but it's out there if you if you're interested. I thought this was super interesting. Uh, so this came in my email box from Art News, their newsletter here. Christy fails to sell four hundred thousand dollar lost Robbie NFT weeks after a similar one sold on Super Rare. And I think this is the work generate AI generated nude portrait number seven frame number one ninety from twenty eighteen by Robbie Barrett. So pretty early there for the blockchain and fairly early for AI, but I'm not an expert. I mean, people have been doing AI art, I guess, for the last 10 years, but uh, let's just take a quick look at this here. Earlier this month, Robbie Barrett's digital artwork sold for uh, frame number 111. This is frame number 190. Sold for 175 ETH or approximately $343,000 on uh, super, super rare. So a huge sale on Super Rare. The sale was notable, not just for its impressive price, but because it was made using AI. The Super Rare sale was not the first time Barat's work sold for six figures. Last year, another piece from the same series sold for 300 ETH, about a million dollars at the time. It was perhaps unsurprising then that when, this, that when earlier this month, Christie's announced a new digital art auction in collaboration with Gucci, Future Frequencies, Exploration and Generative Art and Fashion, the highest starting bid, 228th, 400, $409,000, was for another Brat work, AI-generated nude portrait, frame number 190. Yet when the sale ended Tuesday, the lot was unsold. So I guess this was like the reserve, is what I'm assuming. Which raises the question, <coughs> is buyer interest in AI art dissipating? So... I'm not sure it has anything to do with AI art. I have a couple of theories on this. I think theory number one, it might have to do, this is the work in question. I haven't seen too, I, I kind of briefly glanced at the previous work that sold for, at, on Super Rare. I have a feeling that other work kind of worked a little bit better. It could be the individual work itself. That might be part of the issue. And then I thought it could also have to do with the nature of, of the collector bases that are on these platforms. Super Rare, of course, comes out of crypto, and crypto is a bit more of a higher risk, more speculative culture. Uh, and that's part of what makes it great. That's pro probably why we sell a little more work on Tezos and Super Rare or wherever on Ethereum, and it's because collectors actually think, oh, this is like the start of a new art movement. There's money to be made here if I kind of pick some of this work up early. Um, Whereas Christie's might have a more traditional audience, right? I mean, there is overlap. So it's not, they're not mutually exclusive collector bases, but on Christie's, you probably have a more traditional collector base, which probably is less speculative. So I have a feeling it's a combination of the work itself, perhaps, perhaps and the collector base. You know, maybe Super Rare is somewhere where you're just going to get a crazy bid out of nowhere. We see this all the time. 
you know, there's Tukes, like it's a brilliant, beautiful work, but Tukes just rakes in $1,800 like that. I mean, that's pretty good uh, and a testament to the NFT market and part of what makes it tick, because as we've been mentioning over and over, that financial incentive really gets artists producing because there's big money to be made, right? Again, we I don't want to diminish the financial aspect. It's super important. Uh, so all to say, but it is interesting what happened here. And those are my kind of two theories on that. Uh, Nicholas Sassoon. Uh, and Nicholas Sassoon, a uh, pretty prominent artist, 20,000 followers there. 13 years ago, I asked for advice to an older artist who recently passed away from an older artist and, and the advice was, build a community of people you can rely on. Back then, I didn't listen. Now I think about his words every day. Sales come and go, friendships stay. May your art be a way to find those friendships. So it's kind of back to this idea that uh, really the money is important, but the money shouldn't be your top thing unless, you know, unless you have very a special situation. But really, put it this way, it's it's really nice when, uh, uh, you know, there are things that are more important than money at the end of the day, right? And again, you don't become an artist in order to make a ton of money. Some people do, but it's not necessarily, it's a very, you know, the ultimate high risk if that's your plan. So, and look at this beautiful work here, by the way, kind of reminds me of these Gogolitis, some of Gogolitis's landscape works, beautiful kind of cycling colors here probably on a retro software again i highly recommend people check out uh that cap'n episode i'm going to upload it hopefully there might be two or three podcasts that get uploaded at the, in the next day or two i'm a couple of weeks behind on that uh continuing on this was just kind of cool uh i can't pronounce andreas geisen feedback test ascii art so i just thought this was cool so feedback test Unfortunately, the music is from a band, so I don't want to put it in here, but look at how cool that looks. So a couple of screens here, and that just looks super cool. So just thought that was worth showing. Yeah, Spiegel's Maskinen, this looks amazing. So yeah, Double Helix by Emeralds is the track. Feedback test. So just interesting. I don't even know what's going on here, but it looks great. Here is that collaboration. So Aitso, whose comment we just read about the one of one cell phones, collaborated with Sky Goodman. And I thought this was a pretty cool uh, collaboration here. Let's see if we can get it working. It is slowly working here. And here we go. Here we go. I think this is just uh, brilliant. Uh, a match made in heaven here. I think it's perfect. Uh, this collaboration and it turned out beautifully so really nice work here sky goodman and eight so let's just see what happened here uh sold out at 10 tezos and now the offers coming in strange thing at 20 tezos der nadler 25 20 so that is pretty good and here's another one and this is now 50 on uh secondary so just a really cool kind of two-part series from Aitso and Sky Goodman. Very cool. I love this. These lines and everything. Just match made in heaven. Easter egg with the highs. So just really cool. And here, and again, Der Nadler comes in. Der Nadler had to have it. 25 Tezos. Beautiful. So there's John Thurman. Shout out. Amelia Versace. John Cates. Mikey Wilson. Again, you see how small this scene is, which is what makes it so magical. Here's a couple of the cell phones from Aitso. I think I had this one, the Nokia 3310. I think I had this one. This was a great phone. Uh, the browser wasn't that great, as you can imagine, but I remember I have almost a nostalgia when I look at this one. A one of one, and these are selling for, this went at auction for 35 Tezos. Pretty reasonable. So again, Aitso is just putting them all out and seeing what happens. Let's just see what happened here. Uh, 25 Tezos to Melia Versace. So your opportunity to get a 8 so one of one cell phone, they're selling cheap and they look great and just a really cool concept. 2600 classic Nikia. And here, Rinny Fish, and listen to this music. Q Speed de Sirene, maybe the song of the sirens. I don't know what Q Speed means, but I know the sirens here. 
Music Simo Cell behind the waterfalls. This is off Bandcamp. So this should just be a small. Oops. Kind of sounds like Portisette a bit. <laughs> Super cool. Look at Rinny Fish. This is awesome. It looks great. So hopefully the copyright police don't track me down here. I think for 15 seconds, nothing. I believe you have 30 seconds. Uh, I'll, we're not going to open the Roland Cloud Manager there, tempting as that might be. Uh, so cool work from Rinny Fish, not listed yet. Looking great. And again, Rinny Fish recently went, we had her on the spaces maybe two or three weeks ago. And she recently went full time as an artist out of China. Very cool. And this, I'm not sure where this is out of. Uh, let's just see here if we can get a country. It, but I thought really cool kind of writing here. Indonesia. So I don't know if this is Indonesian. Yeah, because it wasn't quite uh, clear to me what language this is. Look at that. Those who wander are lost. So interesting work here. Sold for 0.2 on Super Rare, part of a larger series here. I just thought super original here. And nice texture, by the way. So almost kind of has that Grafica.png texture. And look at this kind of like, you know, I assume this is Indonesian. I don't know what language. I, mean, I guess there's an Indonesian language. I should know. But uh, this looks like almost pixelated version of this script here. Super cool. So and then just kind of like a poetic work here. Uh, so very cool here. And here are some of the other works. So similar idea. This pixelated script, I love it. Uh, continuing on, okay, so this is, yeah, artist out of Indonesia, and here's some of their other works here. So very cool. Mocha Spaces is, uh, has bought a few of them. So nice collectors there. Big shout out to Mocha. Uh, Gozo. Uncertain Gaze, Morning Fog. I can't remember. I don't know if it was, maybe it was Sabato who retweeted this, but this looked pretty cool too. Look at this texture. We're kind of back to these like really interesting textures and quite a great composition as well. I mean, it looks like a plant, maybe a tulip or a rose is about to bloom with this like wildly out of focus kind of pink, you know, wildly out of focus digital backdrop. And it almost looks like knitting, but I mean, but not. So really interesting work here from Gozo. Morning Fog, just really cool. Uh, Pixel Fool. So this is some sort of software, I think. Trema is software, so you can interact with it using the following commands. P pauses the animation. S saves a screenshot. G saves a GIF. Here's a gift from Trauma number 53, minted by Digital Coleman. So maybe this is part of another series. I'm not quite sure, but I see these pixels. I see this dithering. I see this, it just, and it just attracts me. Similar palette, this is much loved. So here's another one. Yeah, almost exactly the same palette, almost. And here, and now Trauma number 78, mesmerizing. So pretty interesting work here from Pixel Fools. So I don't know if that's like a, uh, FX hash or look at that. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but check out Pixel Fool's uh, page if you're interested. I just thought that looked really cool. Uh, Sabato edition of eight. This sold out like really fast. I love this piece. It was, I think it was pretty cheap too. Yeah, well, eight forty one. He had it one out at four forty four uh, recently. So now selling for eleven on secondary. Just Continuing the Barbie World Revisited series, and I thought this was a really, really nice one as well. Just, you know, there's something to be said for just like massive negative space like this and everything. Just beautiful. So look at that, how it just kind of comes apart and comes back. Looks like kind of reusing the magazine thing. And it's like that game looks hilarious where you make points on the, at the magazine stand. Glitches from Corrupted Super Nintendo ROMs, Barbie Supermodel. And another work from Sabato, this time celebrating the trash theme, Trash Love. And here you see almost what look like tongues coming out of the garbage here, perhaps, or these kind of worm things. 
and falling in love. So a homage, and then there's two little birds on the wires with a almost a toxic waste background here. Toxic waste greens and a purple sky and that beautiful cycling colors. I mean, people mention in the spaces, Sabato is becoming a master of uh, deluxe paint. And the cool thing about that if you go back to the early uh, drawing exercises, maybe we can do that really quick. I mean, you'll see how, basically how humble, um, like if we go to the oldest, they start out of just like, you know, some guy uh, trying to make things work. Like, look at this, this is the first one. Maybe a reasonable price here. I mean, so just testing stuff out and now is like a total master. Well, who knows if he's, a, he's now just brilliant. Let's put it that way. He's brilliant on the deluxe paint. So just goes to show. And when was the date on that? How long has this been? February 13th, 2022. So it's been less than a year and a half. Uh, so just keeping hammering away at it. Muji, I believe also on deluxe paint, D-Paint 2, Twin Towers. Interesting title. And continuing with these really interesting colors and abstraction here and beautiful animations. Just, you know, and again, this kind of astronomical theme, a lot of dithering and just, again, abstraction. Available for seven Tezos on primary. And let's just see, selling a few. So sold three. So those are still available. Great color. I love that deep violet or that light violet. Cool work by Zoxo. Only four minted with one day to go. Again, using what looks like a Super Mario star and maybe Tetris combining them and making a work out of it. So just really interesting, isn't it? I mean, I think just really, we're kind of back to video games here. And I think it's a theme that's just gonna stay with us as long as we look at, you know, this pixel art or this kind of, I mean, I think we could call this pixel art. It's kind of chunky. Uh, speaking of which, and I adore this piece here because it looks like a instant pot or a pressure cooker making soup by Element Lee, uh, one of my favorite pixel artists here and just beautifully done. And this almost makes it look like packaging here. Uh, like it's a front of a, of a instruction manual or something. And here is that instant pot. So just very cool, making soup. Uh, six days. So it's big shout out to mom who bought my bought me an instant pot for Christmas a couple of years ago and Continuing on window So this looks like it's maybe like a train window and again, just kind of very abstract. Is that rain? Uh, you know on the window here just super interesting and It's very bold in the way that it's kind of refusing to be overly representative right like it's allowing itself to be loose rough and, you know, like, it looks like it's all kind of hand done, uh, making it look easy, I might add. Windows 6 Tezos edition of 20. Sticking with those colors, by the way, which is interesting. This maybe is a slightly lighter, lighter blue here, but that is interesting. Uh, Chaz, who kind of a new discovery here, scan expert. So here we have, remember the Pong one where it had the computer at a maybe a 45 degree angle? So this is the next one. And it looks again like an office here and some retro computers here and maybe that actually looks more like a fax coming out here but hard to say and a desk just a cool work here scan expert 845 on secondary let's just see what happened on primary here only three tezos uh, 150 if you made an offer so that is quite a good deal addition of 15 green ginger with another piece resting in the wilderness so this is an addition of 20 for three Tezos on primary and just a campsite here with a nice little fire and a forest and interestingly, a whole bunch of negative space around it. So, I mean, again, that feels kind of video gamey when that happens. And what's kind of interesting, I mean, I don't know if, and the wind actually, or whatever is going on here with the tent is quite interesting. I mean, what this does though, when you stop the forest, it's almost like, you almost are seeing only what they see. Like they're, you're kind of limited to what, you know, if there's a person in here and what they see, they'll only see these trees. They're not gonna see these trees over here. This part is blind. So just interesting composition. Interesting, interesting, resting in the wilderness. 
Ed Marola with some interesting works here. Bored. One of one for 55 Tezos. And again, unafraid to have these kind of blurry pixels here and a figure here and just, I like the frame a lot too in this interesting kind of experiment in the corners here and everything and probably using Procreate and Aspirate again. Maybe it says here, uh, no. So board at a Marola's art shop. Pretty reasonable for a one of one Ed Marola firefighters. So topical as uh, the Mediterranean is on fire. It looks like Rhodes is going to be under control by the time I get there. Uh, but yeah, so here is uh, just a really interesting kind of topical work here of firefighters kind of coming through the clouds from above. Again, kind of, I finally remember the name, kind of almost like a Chagall-like quality uh, to it. It's kind of got the semi-fantasy because, of course, firefighters would be small, but you almost see like the symbolic firefighters over top in skeletons, you know. And then the fire, of course, goes beautifully with Ed's kind of animation style, just kind of moving pixels back and forth. Uh, it almost makes those heat waves from the fire. It's perfect. So very interesting in that blue that's going to save the day. And you see the smoke here. Beautifully done. Very beautifully done. So addition of five, only 15 Tezos. Four left. So get it while you can. Stalomir. Biological Regeneration Resort. So addition of 22... And offers are coming in at 11, 10, so people want it. And again, Stalomir does this kind of very unusual, what I'd call sci-fi pixel art. Uh, again, you saw the title there. And again, this looks like some futuristic planet or something. Uh, and you see these massive plant trees and the crazy colors here. Just a interesting, very interesting as usual. Great title. Homeworld Memories is the name of the series. And for those that don't know, yeah, I mean, you see all sorts of kind of alien looking uh, scenes here. So again, kind of sci-fi pixel art. Alien nostalgia. Look like the sub, you see that? Alien nostalgia. Interesting clue. Notorious Man XDZ with a work here. Nature Guardian. And so again, it's continuing with this very kind of wide angle composition style a little bit more dithering here and continuing to experiment here continue to broaden here almost a classical theme and here we have some stars that are coming in and out and a halo so interesting experimentation here from notorious man xtz and this looks like a waterfall maybe interesting dripping pixels here very interesting nature guardian one of one let's just see what happened uh, sold for 52 Tezos to Dither. And Dither, of course, does those TVs, remember? Does those big retro TVs in collaboration with people. Uh, Cream Safa with a really cool... Uh, I don't have too much Cream Safa because it's usually pretty expensive. Here's an open edition. Uh, 49 have been minted, only five Tezos. Look at this. Now, Cream Safa, I believe, is out of Turkey, if I remember right. And usually it's kind of, I don't know if I'd say it's actually usually a landscape. The walk, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the ones less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Robert Frost. And so 384 by 216, magnified by five, and two colors. So not exactly sure. So it's almost like this is the walking figure, right? It's almost like the figure is reduced to energy pixels. And this almost looks like a C, but could be anything. Interesting piece, as usual, from Kareem Safa. Kind of half, you see abstract there? Kind of like half abstract. This walking energy, this walking swarm. Uh, Haiti Rocket, also out of Turkey, Deadline. Uh, very cool. Uh, pesky uh, filter uh, skull, basically, pesky skull loop and here you see there are a few of them so haiti rocket continuing to ex another person that loves to experiment uh and does a wonderful job at that just an awesome artist remember that uh 
you know, Hundus. Yeah, like, I mean, and wow, I never, I don't even, yeah, we did look at that one and the GM thing. Huge experimenter. So look at those big chunky pixels. Just awesome artist. Uh, Ricano. This was interesting. I had to do a double take on this one. I thought, okay, here's a retro TV again. But then wait a second. So this is called digital painting. And it's a TV on an easel. And there you almost see some art supplies here. So I thought that was quite brilliant. And look who's inside. It is Bob Ross, the guy. So just an interesting work here from Ricano. And I love the palm tree for extra effect. And that nice matte black background. Nice work there too. Buy for five Tezos on uh, primary. Two left, edition of 10. Nice work. Sergeant Slaughtermelon, you said you, I believe Sabato might have retweeted this. I was kind of raiding Sabato's page there this morning. You said you liked Art V2. Some of these early designs have been redone to fit the more consistent dimensions and with a richer body of imagery. I just thought this was interesting. So again, taking the uh, kind of Windows 95 operating system as a kind of as a compositional device, and then editing it, you know, using the selection, right? Uh, the, the, what do they call that? Radial selection or something. Sometimes, and then editing it to sometimes and I guess. And then you said you liked art, so maybe this is the art. And then you see these discs going into this uh, retro computer here. CD-ROM, old software boxes, just hilarious. Awesome, awesome work here. Cool artist. Uh, what is the name? Sergeant Slaughtermelon. Let's make sure we're following them. Uh, continuing on, Nicholas Dietrich. <coughs> Excuse me. With a work in progress. New work in progress, a view I saw from the top of an old office block in North Dublin. So an international digital art scene. So just very cool uh, here. And again, it's tempting to feel like this is pretty handcrafted. And the interesting dither from this kind of landscape to the foreground here. So I'm guessing using a sprites kind of like gradient tool, but not sure about that. Uh, pixel art, digital painting, and they are both. Uh, so just a cool work in progress from Nicholas Dietrich. And here's a work in progress from RJ. So we're actually going to see the finished version too. So here was the first one. And let me just bring up, this was the finished painting, The Struggle, and it is at auction with 16 hours to go. So now it's probably just a few hours. I think the last I saw was at maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And so a cool one of one from RJ, who likes to experiment. Again, we're kind of back to this idea of experimenting with selling styles, uh, experimenting on ways to sell art. Uh, and RJ was doing it, you see eight. So it's kind of part of the, you know, this new digital blockchain domain. I mean, it's not like it's, there's a standard, uh, there are standards, but I mean, there's still so many different ways you can sell work. And you see with like uh, Cap'n, the pixels, maybe you'll get a discount if you have on a future work or early access to a work you can buy, if you have a certain amount of pixels. The cap and so just all very interesting. Look at how minimal this is. You know who this reminds me of, oddly, <clears throat> is Element Lee. This reminds me a little bit of Element Lee. So just very, especially here. Uh, so just super interesting, of course. Look at the floor too. Uh, super interesting work here from RJ. And of course, he uses an online pixel art program, which really gives him his kind of distinct style. And we're seeing that with Cap'n. With the figments, uh, you'd have to go into that episode. I can't remember exactly the names of the softwares uh, Cap'n uses, but again, it's back to this obvious point, but worth stating that the tools uh, create uh, are key components into the results. I mean, it's a very obvious point, just like with oil painting, but artists come to these tools and then make what they can with these tools. And... So what it highlights for me, though, this very obvious point that I'm making is the importance of finding these kind of different tools, which clearly Cap'n was doing some searching around to find some kind of, you know, 
unusual softwares. We've seen Haiti Rocket do that with those kind of architectural works and Brilliance 2.0, right? It's like looking for deluxe paint, finding obscure art programs. Uh, there's something to be gained from that. So cool work here from uh, RJ. <clears throat> Interesting work from uh, Greco Rando. Luxury without money, fancy doubts, so just a nice painting. Uh, inspired by the wonderful painting Andy Dixon Leisure Studies. Now, I didn't realize this was based on an Andy Dixon. Let's see if we can find that because I don't know if you know Andy Dixon. He's kind of a pretty interesting artist, actually. Let's see if we can find... Oh, so kind of loosely based on this. Yeah, really, I haven't looked at Andy Dixon's work for quite a long time. He's quite a good artist, I have to say. Uh, he, yeah, really interesting artist. We'll have to look at more. And there's Andy Dixon right there. Really interesting guy, doing very well in the contemporary art scene. And yeah, just a super interesting artist. Really interesting. So also using tennis, you know, just like Jonas Wood was doing the tennis courts, you see, uh, yeah, Leisure Studies opens in New York. Anyway, I don't want to get us off track here. This is, yeah, like, I mean, but you see 2015, like, that's kind of when I was kind of learning about Andy Dixon, but I haven't heard a ton. I'm sure he's doing stuff, but pretty interesting. So this is inspired by the wonderful painting Andy Dick, by Andy Dixon. Uh, Dixon. Well, nice piece here, and you can tell, like, uh, Gre Greco made it his own. I love the net here, too. Very beautiful and uh, just very, I love the guy smoking the cigarette as he plays tennis. Hilarious. Uh, this is an open edition for 250 and 17 have been minted, open for another day and a half. And of course, stand control newlyweds, the rooster and the chicken, the hen and the rooster are getting married here. And they're all done with the beautiful outlines and gradients with the outlines removed. Uh, congratulations. Edition of 20 for 7 Tezos, uh, 5 are left on primary. This is something, I can't remember how I found this one. This was on Instagram, and I just thought this was a really interesting work here. So this is almost more out of like the contemporary art scene, but it is using, uh, it is using uh, Procreate. I saw somewhere. So here is just a really interesting, but I don't think it's on the blockchain that I know of. And because you see, a lot of these are just like physical works. But uh, then you see here, and this is how I knew is you see watercolor, procreate, print, art, sketch. So gouache. So probably done on procreate, interestingly. So that is Lena Dean out of London. <clears throat> Another artist I don't I don't think we've seen before, Lena Eckert. Kind of would hang really good with MCHX, uh, kind of color field-esque, nice, really nice abstract. Almost feels like AI, uh, but not positive on that. Interesting transition. So this is uh, abstract digital artwork, so probably not AI. Maybe painted this way or produced uh, manually, we might say. Edition of 25, only a Tezo 60, 11 left, pretty nice work. And cider with a couple of uh, fruits here. I think I saw this on Sabato's feed here too. He had a bunch of great retweets uh, yesterday. And look at this beautiful, I think these are grapes. These beautifully distorted grapes. And look at all that texture and the different green. You got to love it when it's just slightly off green like that. So really, really nice work from cider as usual. Look at the watermelon. Just like distorted the heck out of it. And, you know, adding all this texture, it almost looks like the photo of a basement wall uh, here as like an overlay just to give it texture, but who knows? And look at that great edge. So, and of course, green and orange, I believe are opposites on the color wheel, aren't they? Uh, so complementary colors and just really cool work. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey De, let me get the, De Crazy with a new work. Uh, oh, there's some audio here too. Bear Market. <coughs> <clears throat> kind of reminds me a little bit of Spiegel's Meskinen, those TVs that we're all collecting. Different take on it. Illustration. Contemporary illustration. Just cool work. 
Uh, I believe this sold. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, Edouard for one ETH. So again, pretty good in a bear market. When was that? Just July 23rd, a few days ago. Nice work. And Sock Mplexed. Let's see if we can get the name right here. Sock Mplexed. Sock Complexed. So Complexed, maybe. Uh, Goldfish. And this sold for $13,000. Jimbo accepted an offer of 7 ETH. So... Okay, so maybe, okay, so this is an older work. I saw this in Super Rare's uh, recent sales. I didn't realize it was a resale. Wow, but that is notable. These guys would hang really well together, wouldn't they? Uh, kind of contemporary illustration, even, yeah. Uh, so very interesting. So $13,000. Another beautiful work by Bos Grecias. I'm loving this. Uh, series here, this a really cool juxtaposition of painting and photography with this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, negative, uh, you know, element here of a ph photographic negative. Uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's just beautiful. As uh, pleasure photo collage edition of seven for three Tezos. I picked one up. There are three left, so get them while you can. Here's another one. Mix Sinicchio photo collage. And that looks like maybe, is that a, who, what artist is that? I don't think that's Picasso. I think that's someone else. So just another really cool juxtaposition. And you know what I love about this series that Busk is doing is he's really being original. He's not always doing the same thing with the negatives. Like here, like he's being very creative with it. Uh, here he's got the light negative and everything. I'm just, yeah, like I'm really impressed at how creative he is with the these elements, like keeping it new and uh, three Tezos, five left. And here was a, I think this is a cyanotype. <clears throat> and, you know, some more photography here. Cyanotype Canson A3 300 grams. So this is the paper. So it's an A3 and it is 300 gram paper. And this is from Rennes, who I'm not sure film photography, but pretty nice, hey? So this is probably a physical work if it's a cyanotype. <clears throat> Beautiful process here. And here's someone who would hang well with that too. Uh, WV, Les Voix, The Voices. And this is inkjet on watercolor paper, ink, needles, white pen, tape, digital photography. So this looks like a combination of physical and digital elements. And again, would probably hang kind of nicely with that last work there. There's the pins. Fascinating. Seven Tezos, and <clears throat> there are six left, edition of 13. Mikey Wilson with a new AI artwork, Exo Tour Life Blues. And this is, again, using, it's a raw AI work with Mid Journey, edition of 15, and selling at 10 Tezos each. Very nice. So this is awesome. And just another cool blues work. I've been trying to get these painterly textures here. Mikey Wilson has figured out how to do it. He's doing a very nice job here. You must see the signature. You gotta love that. Uh, very nice work here. And here, I mean, raw AI and getting all these great shadows and everything, uh, getting better and better. Inspiring. I find Mikey Wilson's work really inspiring. It inspired me to go back into AI. And here you have the door going through the painting here. Hilarious. Uh, Zoom. And I think actually Mikey Wilson retweeted this too and collected Nose to Nose. So another AI artwork from Zoom, kind of poetic work here, playing with these, again, these kind of pale figures here. And again, I think this is raw AI. So, I mean, incredible that you're getting these from text prompts, I think. Uh, two figures kind of on the side of a bed. It's got a very kind of modernist contemporary art feel to it, doesn't it? Kind of got that museum feel. Digital art, AI illustration, AI art, nose to nose. And this is sold out at four Tezos each. There's Mikey Wilson. Very cool. And here is from Chimosku Jackson's Hologram Gallery, Grandma's Red Flower Pin. So this artwork was minted for the Being Alive solo show by Brandon Vosika at Hologram Gallery. So this is a physical work, acrylic and pastel on canvas, 22 by 18 inches. Pretty nice show. I mean, Chi Moscow Jackson is probably making some waves out there in Seattle because this is all looking really good. Of course, just came off the Kurt Hustle Collective uh, solo show. I mean, 
Uh, you gotta love what she Moscow Jackson is doing. That's a really nice work here. Uh, this is uh, London Graduates, a collection of London Graduates. I thought we could look at this and I just thought it was interesting. I thought that was pretty cool. So they often have their show, I guess, I don't know if it's the time of year when they do it, but here just, you know, just to see what the London graduates are doing, contemporary artists. And so there it is, just a nice little slideshow for us from Instagram on what young artists are up to these days. So very interesting there. And Quila Nina, acrylic and oil painting Kali. So this is an interesting combination of the tarot death card and a Hindu goddess of time and destruction who is called Kali. So interesting combination. And that was burned, so I'm not sure. Maybe there's a new version of it. And continuing on, of course, this is Yoao Salazar with a new work, Reserve Point 33, a new plasticine work. Uh, again, playing with a lot of kind of office uh, iconography and imagery. You gotta love how this is just leaking out and the hearts, the Twitter flying away, and everything. Just more beautiful work from Yoao, such an original artist. Look at how the plasticine, like even working the gradients into the plasticine. It's brilliant, brilliant work. Uh, just love it. And that's your show, everyone. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, take care.